Okay, I didn't think I was going to be making this video, but I saw a YouTube channel review Star Sector, and it was like five hours long, and he seemed to want to like the game, but he had a lot of issues. I mean, apparently the game is just too hard. I disagree. I do think that there's some points where the game doesn't really communicate very effectively how some mechanics work or how you're intended to play certain things. But th that part can be improved on, sure. Yet there's some things that he said that I felt were just wrong, like fuel and supplies just being too expensive. And so the, uh, the missions from the Intel tab being like an un not viable as a way of making money just because it's too expensive to travel anywhere. And I felt like that was just uh, kind of insane. Uh, maybe insane is a strong word, but I'm, I'm really not sure how that became the conclusion. So I figure I'll just go through some of the early game, not even doing like optimal min-maxing your income the way that some people will do with like they'll optimize certain trade routes where they just bounce back and forth between different systems no, because they know which systems are going to have excess of certain goods, which ones are going to have deficits and they just sort of like fly around and get two million credits in the first couple of months that sort of thing. I'm not even going to do that. I'm just going to play through a kind of normal exploration loop where I'm going to do these missions and look at that two of them right next to each other which is pretty common uh, but you know, not always, and not even necessary. Hopefully, I'll be able to demonstrate that 60,000 credits from surveying this planet for 15 supplies, and there, well, I'll we'll get to the cost about that in a second, but hopefully I should be able to demonstrate that that's very easily worth it. Now, one thing that's pretty useful is uh, showing your fuel range in the Intel tab, which is currently not that big, but that's, of course, because my fuel is not near capacity. And fuel's relatively cheap, so I can fill up on that. Uh, for my first level, I'm just gonna grab the navigation skill um, so I can go faster. Right? You spend the same amount of fuel to cover the distance, right? So this isn't improving my uh, economic efficiency. I'm just take well, aside from, I guess, using less supplies for maintenance, but it's currently 1.3 a day. So really, I'm just saving myself time and the economic benefits are pretty minimal. So I'm probably gonna do something pretty simple. I'm going to buy fuel off the open market. I mean, I could do the black market to save that 2,000 credits hey, and then just run away from the patrols. That's usually what I would do, but you know what? We're just going to grab it like a good boy off the open market and then move on. Right, I need to actually accept these. I was a little worried for a second. Did I not grab them? I didn't, but they were still available. Okay, so we're gonna just head on over to this one. Turn off the transponder. So there's a guy here. I, I, I mean, the fleet doesn't look... Okay, I don't know why I stopped here. I, I didn't intend to stop. I think my mouse clicked when I that's a hardware issue. But then again, this fleet doesn't look too difficult anyways, so that should be fine. I really need to get... <laughs> I need to get a new keyboard, I need to get a new mouse. I need to get a lot of new things, because I'm having hardware issues. But, well, at least it didn't cost me too much. Although, generally speaking, giant pirate fleets shouldn't spawn outside the starting, the uh, starting system. At least not right off the bat. I don't think, I, I, there's probably some layer of protection against that. Let's see how you guys are doing. You're doing A-OK. -okay.
Yes, the fun of fighting against hounds. Without any real weapons, they can just one one shot them. They actually have a chance to use their maneuverability to annoy you. Well, the PD laser should kill it eventually. Oh hey, we got its engines. Maybe the tactical laser can finish it off. There we go. That's what I like to see. And we lost the shepherd. Uh, it does have uh, reinforced ball caps, so it should be recoverable. Now, it would be a lot smarter if carriers would actually use their fighters to defend themselves, but they don't. Instead, the talons are wasting their time attacking this thing. Uh, not, just really not the best idea. This thing's got a lot more armor, and you're also dying to a hound. Something that the talons can easily kill. And the Wayfarer should have no problems with that hound. Uh, another One criticism that I actually did agree with in that video was the idea that pirates just kind of fight to the death and that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. This is a, like, this is a game where the ideological, like, fundamentalist religious group, the Bloodic Path, can be bribed, but the pirates who are here to steal your stuff cannot be bribed and also don't surrender. They're, like, these guys are more like a death cult, where the path is more like the pirate, or more like pirates. It's, it's a bit strange. Like, you can, okay, you can say, you know, the, uh, I don't really think I want to carry these around. Yeah, I generally don't. I generally don't want to, like, bulk out my fleet with a bunch of, uh, more or less junk ships. because that can get expensive very quickly without the ships contributing too much to your fleet. So, anyways, it's weird how, like, you can have the path be kind of like, have, like, corrupt fleet captains who will, you know, accept bribery and overlook, you know, technological uh, sins. That, like, that's acceptable. But how is it that the pirates are not bribable. Or at least, like, don't run away instead of fighting to the death. They're very... It's almost like some kind of death cult, honestly, in that sense. Yeah, it took a little bit of storm damage, but luckily, storm damage scales off your fleet size. I don't think the game tells you that, but, like, the, the damage from getting hit by a storm in the early game is just not that much. So you can afford it pretty easily. Uh, let's see. It looks like I didn't encounter any new missions on my way here. I didn't pick up any other transmissions. Alright. Well, let's go. So, survey costs. Uh, 15. Normally, it would be 40, but between the survey equipment on the Apogee and the Shepherd that you start with on the Exploration Fleet start, they'll reduce it by a flat 25. So all the resources you need are reduced by 25, which makes it a lot easier to meet the crew and machinery requirements, but also makes the supply cost relatively cheap. So if you get a decent amount of survey equipment, this supply cost will be down to the minimum, which is five. And spending 500 credits worth of supplies to survey a planet is usually going to be a worth it, right? You're not going to go somewhere and survey planets to make money, but wherever you go, you can survey the planets that are there, and even if it's only worth a thousand credits, you were already here anyways, and you spent 500 credits worth of supplies on it. Uh, and hey, if it's better than the bare minimum, then it's going to be worth even more credits. So, surveying... I mean... Look at that. I started with 50,000. Now I'm up to just shy of 100,000. And so even if I pay the refuel costs, that's going to cost me like 15,000. Right? The, the fuel cost after I get back. If I just went straight back and bought fuel, that cost me another 15,000. And the result is I profited. And it's before we even sell the survey data, which is worth 5,000. Not too bad. Nothing crazy, though and I should potentially find stuff in system to salvage. And then also I've got this one for 70,000 right next door. Super easy to grab. 
So, yeah, this mission is very profitable, and it's very easy. Data core, yeah, it's, it's basically free money, but at the same time telling you, hey, go do the main quest line. It'll be really cool, we promise. Let's see, 35 for a rock, probably not worth it. It's a little early. Uh, for these guys, there's only four of them. These should, this should be just fine. Just send in the... Send in the carrier with the talons, and send in the wayfarer. Oh, I, apparently I'm in the solar corona, because it is really red. I thought I was outside of it, but I guess not. Yeah, I thought the Wayfarer actually had an Omni Shield, but apparently it doesn't. Also, it's spinning around. All right. Yeah, how about you use those fighters offensively and actually get this over with? You know. Although maybe attacking the point defense frigate is not the bird, the one you want to go after first. But whatever. It's fine. You can... You can go in there. Get in there. Finish him. Yeah, see, just, just the two of them will be just fine. You know, Talons, I didn't like Talons when I first started playing, but I think that there's actually a decent place for them. Because when when you actually look at the numbers, they're very strong, and they don't have a lot of weaknesses. Which sounds odd to say, considering like the cheapest fighter. But, think about it like this. They're two ordnance points, so they're really cheap. They have a five second replacement time, which is, I think, the fastest out of any fighter in the game. And they come with four, and each of them has a Vulcan cannon. Now, something to understand is that for a lot of fighters, they might have a lot of guns. Like, say, the broadsword has two machine guns, but it doesn't actually have enough flux to fire them. It only has ten dissipation. Not so with Talons. Talons actually have enough dissipation to fire their Vulcan constantly. So that's twice, so their sustained firepower is twice that of a broadsword in theory. And there's four, and there's, you know, compared to broadswords, there's an extra one. And then they also have the swarmers, which give them decent anti-armor uh, capabilities as far as uh, fighters go. So, and then their top speed is 325, which is pretty fast for fighters. So top speed, replacement time, cost, damage output, all of those are great. The only real weakness they have is that they're, they're incredibly fragile. But there are ways to deal with that. Number one way would be to pair them with the Gladius, which got buffed and now actually has better flares, right? Before they had only single decoy flares, but now they have the full, like the actual proper flare system, just like broadswords do. And those flares, distracting enemy point defense, are a great way to compensate for how, or at least, you know, somewhat protect the talons. And you can't use broadswords, right? The problem with broadswords is they're a lot slower than the talons, and that mismatch in speed causes some conflict, right? You're not fully taking advantage of the speed of the talons. You're, you're kind of wasting it. Whereas if you pair with Gladius, those have very similar speeds. It's orbiting a cryolite volcanic orbit. Oh, okay. That'll be this one. Whereas, um, right, Gladius pairs nicely with talons. And then they also, of course, bring uh, kinetic damage. So there's swarmers for anti-armor, the machine guns on the Gladius for anti-shield, Another one. I should be able to do more or less the same. And then the Vulcans for anti-hull. Although they also do decent anti-shield. It's like 125 DPS. So they pair very nicely together. They have short replacement times. They're very fast. They're very cheap. Uh, I actually like the combination quite a lot. So if I get a chance to replace one of these wings with a Gladius, I will. Yeah, you can kind of tell where my mind is when I'm playing this game. I'm mostly thinking about what am I going to do with this fleet? Where am I taking this? What would be 
different from, like, I want to do things that are different from the things I've done before, but still functional enough to take on all of the challenges in the game. So how about you target the one that's attacking you with your fighters? That seems like a good idea. You need to be more aggressive. Maybe the escort order is a bad idea, because it's, it, you really seem to be making some poor decisions, my friend. And now you're... What are you doing? You're turning around when the enemy's right next to you. I mean, the enemy's weak enough that it kinda doesn't matter. But you do need to kill him today, because we don't want to take too much... I mean... Yeah, it's not really gonna die or anything. Yeah, you know what, whatever. It's fine. Take all day if you need to. I've definitely tried versions of the game where I've turned off the, um, where I've turned off a lot of free income, like the Glacier stipend, and I reduced the money you get from commissions. And what I found is that, does it make the game more difficult? Honestly, not really. It just makes it more tedious because it takes longer to get to a point where you can actually do the stuff you want to do. Hey, ruins, look at that. There's actually a way to tell if there's ruins before you even survey the planet. I actually wasn't paying attention, so I didn't pick up on it, but you can see that there's this little... There's like... Well, now that the debris field is here, it's kind of confusing, but... There's like these little orbital pieces of debris around the planet that kind of give away that there's ruins there before you even survey it. Uh, now that there's five, I guess I'll also deploy the shepherd. Yeah, okay, the shepherd can escort that. And this should be fine. But yeah, by the time I get back to civilized space, I should make a decent chunk of cash. I'll look for some decent ships to expand the fleet without, and hope they'll, you know, if you pick things well, then those new ships should be worth the cost you're paying for them. I mean, I'm really, really surprised that this per that the, uh, I don't actually remember the, the channel name, but I'm really surprised the guy was struggling so much. I mean, he doesn't, he seems like a smart guy, he should be able to figure things out. But no, uh, well, you just spent a lot of time complaining. You spent a fair amount of time out of that five hours complaining about how uh, rewards for combat need to be upped because it's just there's just not enough supplies. It's too difficult. It's too challenging. You can't make any money off of anything. The missions are useless. The missions. You can't do them. They're unprofitable. The only thing that kept him going was the free income from starting a colony, which... Uh, to be fair, is kind of your goal eventually. You know, it's a nice... Because at that point, you don't have to worry about... You can just go around doing whatever looks interesting instead of worrying about the profitability of the venture. All right, just, you know, just go in. You know, there we go. All right, easy enough. Running out of space. We'll dump the fuel. See, look at this. I've already got all the fuel back, and then some. I can't even carry all of it. And these survey probes are everywhere. They're everywhere. I mean, you might get into a system that's where you're unlucky and you don't find any, but it feels just not that expensive. Like, I don't even have room for a lot of this stuff. I might just leave these here. Although, to be fair, I can just dump the... You know, the fuel's not that expensive, so I can dump extra fuel. I mean, it's cheaper than metals, and I can dump metals, too, because those are also really cheap. Yeah, it's fine. I'll take the... I'll take the free stuff. Oh, probably I have, still have... There we go. Definitely not surveying the gas giant, because they almost always have a very low sell value, and also very expensive to survey. Look at that. Beautiful. I have more supplies and more fuel than I started with. Like, I could have not bought all the fuel that I needed. I could have bought less than that. 
in that way I would have actually been able to store some of that extra fuel and like maybe sell it when I get back and make a profit off of that. But yeah, fuel supply is not an issue. And I'm on normal, right? He was playing on easy where you get bonus salvage. I think it's, I forget how much, it's like 50% or something. It's a pretty big number. I'm playing on normal where you don't get that bonus salvage. And this, this is not like a, an exceptional loop. This is not like an exceptional adventure here. This is pretty normal for the start of the game. And then, like, maybe if you like, expand your fleet rapidly with a bunch of junk ships, you'll find that things get expensive very quickly, but... <sighs> well, anyways, hopefully I should be able to demonstrate a very straightforward way of progressing that doesn't screw you over in the long run. Uh, as for skill points... Hmm. Going down the industry tree is a very solid choice in the early game, even if you don't plan on staying there. Because it, it just makes... Because, like, your goal is to make enough money to expand your fleet so that you can then start up and then make more money using your bigger fleet to start up a colony, and then your colony can fund... Like, well, you can't immediately fund stuff off of it. You want to invest in it to make it big and safe. So it's a nice, safe, profitable haven for you. And then once that's really profitable, you can just buy whatever you need. And at that point, you can stay in industry if you like, or you can spec out of it. That's the general strategy. But it's honestly not necessary. You can kind of... It, it'll, the game will take longer to get there if you skip the industry tree, because things are going to be less profitable. But it's not really more difficult. Assuming you know what you're doing. Maybe if you... If you're new to the game, it'll be more challenging, but... Anyways, I think I'll just go into... I'll go straight into combat stuff. Hell, I could go straight into... This, and then go... Maybe I'll do Neuralink. I'm gonna go straight into Neuralink. That could be fun. Neuralink is not the best... As far as power level goes, it's not a, it's not a great capstone. But it is a lot of fun. Uh, how much would this cost? Well, it's not telling me. It shouldn't be too much. It doesn't look like a very big planet. There's no ruins. And, but, I mean, there's not usually ruins on Volcanic. I mean, I've got a lot of supplies. I might as well. Yeah. I flew all the way over here. It would be a real shame to leave without surveying. And there's some of that new exploration music droning in the background. I'll toss this over to these guys for some free money. Hmm, you could salvage whatever the hell this is. Oh. Wow, that's a little disappointing. What would be really nice would be to find one of the rare level 7 officers, which... I, I, I don't think I've ever found more than one. In theory, you could collect all four. There's four per sector, but I've never found more than one. And to be honest, they always, without fail, they always have Ballistic Mastery and Energy Mastery at the same time. They're, I wish they would put in some kind of protection to make that like at least rare, if not just outright block that, because how many ships really need both? It's practically a waste of a skill point. Like, this is supposed to be a legendary level 7 officer, and you screwed me over. Is this some kind of joke to you? Oh, well, apparently it is. It's a great cosmic joke, specifically to screw you over. joys of hyperspace. Serene, aside from the occasional explosions, as our hull is zapped by space lightning. Whatever that means. I mean, I can take this one and fly further out to take that one. And you'll notice the, uh, the, pro the profit scales off the distance. The further away from the core, the more they pay you to go out there. Which, you know, fair enough. It makes a lot of sense. 45 supplies. Oh, right, and of course, 
maybe I should have done this earlier since I did level up. I could story point this thing with the new uh, S mod bonuses. I could story point this thing to double its effect. So this, instead of contributing 20, would contribute 40, plus the Shepherd would be 45 reduced survey costs. At which point, that's a pretty good reduction. Not to mention, you get 100% bonus XP, so that just means I'll get my story point back very quickly and I'll level up faster. It seems worth it. Responder on. Let's see. So, is there still a reward? Yes. Wink at them. You're special and you know it. Oh no. I don't think she liked that, guys. Um, I'm just going to stand here quietly. One. Remember, if you want to get through the dialogue, mash one. Nice to meet you. No reason to be mean to this guy. Only two missions? Dang. <laughs> the the transport ones are nice, even though they have uh, they're time sensitive, unlike the other missions. What's great about them is that because they're, they stick to the core worlds, they're very easy to do, and they don't pay any less, despite being very short range missions. So that's me. Yeah, I'll just hop over to Westernese. I think that's how you pronounce that. And then this one's not time sensitive, so I'll actually do this. Instead, even though it's closer, I'll actually run this way first. But yeah, I'm already making money. Bye bye. Okay, they uh, spawned on top of me. That's one thing that could be fixed. It looks because they needed like a good five seconds to get more from where they were to the jump point but they just kind of teleported on top to the jump point once I went through it that's something that could be fixed now obviously I could have just got seen them and gone to the other jump point I could disengage with a story point right now or you know I have the navigation skill I could just transverse jump when I see them and skip the jump point entirely uh, but I'm not really scared of this fleet, so I'll just fight them. Oh, is your combat readiness really that low? Dang. Alright, well, I guess you can hang out behind me as well. I don't know why that's not on auto-fire. Just put everything on auto-fire, please. You guys should be able to finish that off pretty quickly, yeah? Yeah? Come on. It looks like it's still alive. But it's not really that friendly. I'm not worried. Okay, can you guys... Okay, you, Talons, go. Use the Talons. Let's see. Now you can attack that. You should be fine. I'll have you hang out behind me. Yeah, there does really need to be some kind of surrender mechanic for the pirates. Where they offer, where they, in the middle of combat, they could just like, you could have like a pop-up where they send a transmission to you, like, hold on, we'll pay you, please spare us. Or you could have ships break off and start running away, that sort of thing. 
Yeah, how about you just hang out behind him? It, it, it's really, really strange. There, there's a few things that kind of break the immersion in this game. The idea that this is like a, a living, breathing galaxy that could really stand to be improved on. I'm just going to hit X to hold fire so I can get the tech, uh, tactical laser off and get the zero flux boost, which will help me close the distance. But, you know, the mule's got maneuvering jets. Little bastard. Really? That got me. The, uh, the active flares did apparently nothing to distract it. A bit odd. Even the Shepherd drones completely failed to accomplish their goal. How is this taking so long? You know what? How about you go over there? You are taking embarrassingly long to do that, my friend. The Talons should have ripped apart that wolf by now, but apparently that's just too challenging. Must be the, sh the shepherd must be using its. Uh... <laughs> Hold on, you can see the, sh the, the shepherd spin. You, that was just the tail end. When it gets to maximum spin, they go quite fast. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is. It, I think it's something with trying to. Uh, when it's getting shot at, it's trying to like do the, the thing where the ships tilt to, to hit, so that you're hitting uh, fresh armor instead of the destroyed armor. And for some reason. Specifically on the Shepherd, it causes it to spin like a Beyblade. A Beyblade. Apparently, I can't speak. Uh, yes, please die, die. Uh, but you know, even if they could patch that out, I don't think they should. Uh, the Shepherd spin is pretty iconic. We love the Shepherd spin here. No, if we could just finish him. That would be fantastic. Yes, stop using your talents defensively and just finish the enemy, please. Much appreciated. Oh yes, the classic. Uh, for some reason, the, the auto cannon was shooting at a fighter while the assault gun was shooting at the enemy's shield. Uh, there's, there's definitely something that's very quirky about the AI where you can tell them to kill one ship and they'll, sh they'll drive right up to it but then they'll shoot their guns at something else for some reason. That's another thing I would like them to fix. But setting that aside, you know, nice clean victory, no problems. Just, uh, move on with our day like nothing happened. Hey, look at that, free money. See, and while I'm over in the system, I'll see if there's any decent ships to expand my fleet with. Or, for that matter, decent weapons, because my Apogee is still using... Uh, it's still using some very janky weapons. This, this would be a lot easier if I had some proper weapons for this thing. Okay, apparently there's a fleet guarding that jump point. It's probably pirates. And if this is where transverse jump is really useful if you're new to the game right there. Skip the jump point and go directly to the planet. Let's see, is this, uh, that is in a completely different direction, so I think I'll pass. Howdy, Persian League. Here you go. The trip home was interminable. I don't understand at all why I should be confined to quarters during a hyperspace storm alert. Still, I believe I've learned something, like, you know, about myself. Thank you, Captain. Leave. Okay. Just gonna sell that on the open market, you know, like it, which you, you know, shouldn't do, but I'm just making this, just making this less profitable my, for myself so I don't have to worry about getting chased by a patrol because I'm not really worried about maximizing my profits right now. Well, let's see. There's definitely large ballistics here, but not large energy, so that's not exactly 
and we're seeing a lack of missiles. Yeah, I should have known but the better than the comes the Persian League to outfit my ships. I uh, don't think I'm changing much here. Uh, maybe I could throw a mining book. Mine last year there's probably not bad, honestly. Also, it has a flux distributor, even though it has way more dissipation than it needs right now, considering the weapons I've got. Uh, yeah, I think I'll throw in a mining blaster. That seems like a good idea. I clicked phase lance. Actually, phase lance is probably even better for the early game. Well, I found an ion cannon, so I can toss that on. For the early game, yeah. Phase Lance is probably the way to go. Although, that's going to cause black market sus suspicion. Let me check. Because the black market got way more suspicious than it was in previous patches. So sometimes buying, like, one weapon, you'd be like, none? Okay, it stayed at none. Sometimes you buy, like, two weapons, and you get chased down by your patrols. It's a little ridiculous. Or maybe I only think it's ridiculous because I'm basing it off the standards of the older patch. I guess I can throw on this iron cannon I have. Let's see. Don't exactly have a lot in the way of hull mods this early. Auxiliary thrusters, though. Auxiliary thrusters. I don't actually have these hull mods. They just start on the ship, so if I remove them, they're gone forever. Gotta be careful with that. Those auxiliary thrusters are going to make the early game a lot easier, being able to actually point at a ship and stay on target will be a lot easier. I would love to replace this with a Locus. This with a Locus, this with probably an Auto Pulse, and then maybe an, like a maybe like an Iron Pulser here. But for now, this will do. This will be just fine. Do you guys have the Gladius? No. Do you have any decent ships? Uh, this has 5D mods, and high maintenance is probably a bit much this early on. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll pass for now. As much as everybody drools over the... Oh, this one has no D mods on the black market, that's pretty neat. But again, high maintenance. If I was going around doing some bounty, like, pun I could use it, I could pilot it myself, and punch above my weight class and some bounties, and that would make me some money pretty quickly. But that's not really what I'm planning to do. I'm mostly gonna do exploration here. So, I wanna expand my fleet with stuff that's, to be honest, the, the easiest way to do this would be to just grab sunders whenever you see them. Because, obviously, mostly you're going to be fighting the derelicts at survey ships and stuff, and eventually the mothership. And the easiest way to do that would be to buy a bunch of sunders and give them high-intensity lasers. It, it makes it way... It makes it very easy with only a few ships. Although, a good substitute for sunders would be manticores with hellbores. And I think they have hellbores here, yeah? No, actually, they specifically don't. Hmm, I have a goofy idea. This is not... This is just temporary, okay? This is... Yeah, this is going to put it to extreme immediately. And that's why... you pro I probably should have just sold on the black market at the start. You buy one... Sh you buy one little ship, and everybody loses their minds. It's extreme. They're going to hunt me down, and... Well, I don't really have any contraband, so they'll just drain a little bit of CR and call it a day. Which is honestly not that bad. But it'll be annoying. This is a pretty terrible build. But we're gonna do it anyways. Let's see. Hmm. Well, I'll just use these because they're free. I already have them. And then max that out. Uh, auxiliary thrusters get a little bit here. Yeah, that's the way to do it. This thing should not make a lot of sense, but it should do it. Definitely not the way I want to build it, but it should be good enough for now.
especially against those derelicts. Sending in a Manticore will be... Honestly, even with a bad build, should be better than the ships that I already have. Wow, even with its flux maxed out, it's having a little bit of trouble here. Maybe I should give it sa Maybe I should buy the Sabos. But then again, I'm not going to be fighting... Well, I guess I could get ambushed by pirates, right? There's always that. So having something that's a little more well-rounded is probably a good idea. The chain gun by itself has really good DPS against armor and hull, so everything else can be very much shield-focused. Ah, yes, of course, the, uh, the age-old problem of the AI being too skittish. Far too skittish. I want you to rip his face off. You need to get closer, my friend. Yeah, safety overrides are just not the best idea for the Manticore. It completely wastes its main advantage of having, well, a large ballistic having pretty decent range, and then a ballistic rangefinder on top of that is explicitly there to boost your range. So it's kind of wasteful. But at least now, okay, now it can do some damage to this mediocre hammerhead build. And this is just temporary anyway, so that's good enough. This is good enough for now. Okay. And later on, I'll give it a proper build. Probably a Hellbore and some Light Needlers. Uh, I think I'll... Yeah, I think I'll skip that. Uh, Latchers are pretty decent if I can get the right weapon. Well, well there's Light Auto Cannons here, and there's Swarmers here. Yeah, I can grab a Lasher. Alright, let's see. Well, no. Uh, the dual auto cannons got buffed. I would normally skip them before because they're just way too inaccurate compared to even the light auto cannons. Their, their accuracy, as you could, if you could see it down there, is very poor as opposed to medium. <laughs> but they got their flux efficiency buffed so much that it's. Like, like the, the flux per second here is 80. Here, it's only. 86. It's only 6 more and has 43 more DPS. What are these numbers? This is this is a little ridiculous. Like, the, the accuracy trade-off before kind of made sense. <laughs> now it's a little ridiculous. And I'll just put them in the hard points because these hard points cut the recoil in half, so that inaccuracy is not as big of a deal. Then we can throw on a couple of Vulcans for point defense, some... Swarmers for anti-armor, and right here, well, let's get the flux stats up first. What I would like to do is put a light mortar here, but instead I'll have to get something more expensive. I guess I'll put a light auto cannon. So these are three points. Yeah, that's probably fine. Okay, what else? I could grab a Centurion. Is there any Ion Cannons? No, but I could definitely rip one off of the... this guy. I could rip that off of you and stop sending you into combat. Yeah, you can become a pure... pure logistics ship. So the, the nice thing about having a, a sort of combat freighter is that without the civilian hull mod, you can put on expanded cargo holds and there's no maintenance penalty. So that's pretty nice. It means I can also do fuel tanks while I'm at it. And just specialize you in basically running away. You know, maybe keep a little bit of guns just in case I do actually deploy you. Yeah, that'll be good. And then I can take this guy. Let's 
see, we can grab another Swarmer. Nope, I've used them all up. Okay. I guess Breaches will have to do. They're not a bad choice, but I think against fr for Frigate on Frigate combat, Swarmers are better, and Breaches are more against larger targets. And then I want Light Auto Cannons. Throw on Single Ion Cannon, and then... Hmm. I mean, normally what I do is tr all Light Autos, but now I'm using the Doubles. So it feels a bit awkward. I'm kind of tempted to use the IR Pulse Laser. The only problem is the Flux is going to be way too high for this thing. It's not exactly got the best Flux stats here. Hmm. I'm not really sure what else to do with that. Maybe I'll stick to the light auto cannons instead of the duels, because these are turrets, and as crazy as the stats are on the dual auto cannon, it's still going to have an incredibly high recoil on turrets. Yeah, let's go with that. And you guys don't have gladiuses, yes, and, uh, Anything else? I already have a dram. I have a dram. That one day, I won't need a dram. Yeah, this looks fine. With a capital fine. Yeah, they're gonna chase me down. Oh no! Comply. Yeah, just during a little combat readiness, we're good. I can just immediately repair that anyways. Oh right, I should buy, I should buy fuel before leaving. Well, I'll buy some of it cheaper than normal. Actually, while I'm here, I'll buy these mod specs too. Not that I'm particularly using any of these. Expanded my fleet, got new mod specs, got the fuel that I need, and very clearly profited from that mission. Now I'm going to profit some more. Oh no, one relationship. That's not a lot. Off we go. And a quick save. And off we go. I lose a little bit of supplies to that, but we should have enough supplies already. And we should find plenty of supplies when we get there. Yeah, I'm really stuck on that. The, the complaints about supplies and fuel. On easy mode. On easy mode. I can only assume that you just salvaged every ship you found, added it to your fleet, and then every time you got back to the Core Worlds, just spent all your money on ships. I can only assume that's what went wrong. Like, I don't know. Maybe, just like, you know, in real life, where one of the best pieces of financial advice you can give to people is, you know, fi fi figure out a way, like, don't splurge all your spare cash on luxury items. Uh, you know, you want to have a little bit of a cushion. The same is true in this game. You know, that's a decent idea. There was another thing I was going to say, and I've already forgotten what it was. You know, it must not have been very important. It's a barren rock, but it's only five. Wait, I'm already here, so might as well. And this one, you can see the little debris in orbit. This has ruins. And it's only five. Look at that. Hey, look. Free stuff. I'm going to learn that. More free money from this. Yeah, this game is uh, not super challenging, generally speaking. 
Again, maybe if you don't, maybe when you first start playing, it can be pretty intimidating. You don't know what you're supposed to do, or what's intended. There's a lot of things the game doesn't tell you. Like, the game doesn't tell you, hey, surveying is very expensive unless you have survey equipment. It doesn't tell you that. You kind of have to figure that out. Or, I don't think it tells you that. Because there's some things it does tell you. It's been a while since I really paid attention to the tutorial. Yeah, even if that was hostile, I could take that. And that's another thing, is knowing what you can take and what you can't take definitely requires game experience. Honestly, the game gives you so much salvage that I find the salvage skill pretty un unhelpful. Hey, you've got survey data. Give it to me. Twelve, uh, pennies for a little bit of topographic data. I'll take it. Oh, there's a gate in the system. That might be helpful in the future. Yeah, buoy. I'll take that. This one, the density of the debris is quite high, so this has probably got some decent ruins. It's got vast ruins. Uh, do I need another dram? You know, as I expand my fleet, I will, so I'll take that. Uh, I'll dump the organics, though. That's a lot of organics. Some blueprints, some mod specs. Very nice. Times three volatiles. Oh, right. I forgot. I already bought the survey data, so I'm not actually going to get anything from that. Not any topographic data. Unfortunate. I guess I'll check out that vigilance. So what am I here for again? It's at the heart of the system. Orbital habitat. Nice. I'll see that survey. Check out the gate in case there's any salvage there. Yeah. I'm not spending a story point or a story point on that. Research station. Very nice. So you just find stuff. You just find a lot of free stuff in this game. I'll drop the organics because if I want to build like a, a nav buoy or something or a com relay, then at least the metals can do that, and both of them are worth the same anyways. Bye, take that, take that. Before we run away, do this. Learn those. This guy is... I think... Well, there's a couple fleets. I don't know which one was the one I saw earlier. I'll get my money. I was talking about the level 7 officers earlier. And there's one right there. Let's see. Does it have the very cursed Ballistic Mastery and Energy Weapon Mastery? Does it have both? We will find out very quickly. All right, what have you got? Energy weapon? Ooh, it doesn't. Actually, this is a really unique... It's got both the yellow skills and both the blue skills. That's really unique. It's really, really un unusual. Interesting. But honestly, this is actually a fant... <laughs> this is a pretty damn good skill setup. Uh, probably would skip polarized armor. I think, given everything else, I would take field modulation instead. Go more of a high-tech ship, but... You know, considering... That normally you can only get up to six skills on your officers. The, the polarized armor is kind of like a free bonus. And the first six skills... Are like the main, the meat. Now, the elite skills are not necessarily where I want them, but I can always adjust that with a retrain. In fact, I'm probably going to do that because I want her to be—I don't want her to be cautious. So, so we'll move uh, this one and this one. Energy weapon and polarized armor. I think that's good. Just like that. Although energy weapon mastery is not going to be super useful yet. Although I suppose I could put you on the Apogee. Yeah, I'll just, uh, whatever, it's fine. I'll find you. Wouldn't this be pretty good on a Hyperion? That I was just looking at earlier? 
Like the gunnery implants are not super useful. Uh, the polarized, are, like, they, like, well, at least they'll range. The elite bonus would be kind of decent. 4% ECM. Polarized armor would not be super useful either. But everything else, you know, free, free flux stats from Ordnance Expertise. Target analysis is kind of, is you want it on 90% of your ships. It's just more damage. Helmsman ship is good on basically everything. It's not always optimal, but it's never bad. Systems expertise would be relevant. Energy weapon would be relevant. I don't know. I'll have to think about it a little bit. But it's actually not bad as far as skill sets go. And I know because I was trying to do a challenge run where I only used officers that I found and rescued rather than training any myself. And man, those the skill sets they spawn with are just the most cursed thing you've ever seen. I, like, wow, I can't believe some people actually use those officers. I, None of them are good. It's so, so rare to have, like... I'm not even talking optimal, just ones that make sense. Half of them get ballistic and energy mastery at the same time. Why? Okay, uh... That's probably a friendly fleet. Just normal independence, and not... Got ruins location. Hmm. On a desert world, in this system, you mean the one right here? So it gave me information that there's ruins on this planet, when I could already tell that because of the debris. Amazing. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good ruins. Squall. Well, that the squall's pretty good on the Apogee, but without ECCM, it's going to be a bit rough trying to hit small targets. And even with ECCM, you're not really hitting frigates that, that reliably. I really don't think I'm using that anytime soon. Unfortunate. More marines. Are you trying to tell me something, game? You want me to go on a raiding party? Let's see. And then I'll head over to the gate. And then I should have enough fuel to jump over here. And then I'll go back to the core world to expand my fleet. And then I'll probably cut the video. Because I think at that point I've kind of made my point. You know, not not for the full game. You know, the mid game and the late game, you definitely have to transition into different different uh, approaches to how you make money. But for the early game, this works, right? I'm back up to three. Like I expanded my fleet, I made money. Like I'm profiting. I'm not. I'm really not having supply issues. So at least for the early game, this is fairly simple. And if you really want to make money as fast as possible, there are definitely other ways to do that. <sighs> oh, the idea that it is most profitable. It is most profitable to just sit there to get a... Well, I mean, you do get a... If you get a commission and your level is high enough, because the money you get from commission scales off your level, by the way. The game doesn't tell you that, but... I, well, I mean, it's kind of obvious, right? That's kind of obvious. Like, a more skilled captain is going to get paid more. So, yeah, the game doesn't really need to tell you that. Or you can imply it sort of in character, as it were. But yeah, if you have a decent level, you get decent money. So, you can sit around and have a fairly small, profitable fleet just doing nothing. But that's definitely not the fastest way to progress the game. I mean, even going through all these storms, I have never, I have not bought any supplies. I've never had to. I have more supplies than I started with at the start of the game, despite expanding my fleet and running through storms and surveying planets. The idea, the idea that supplies are prohibitively, are just too expensive. It's, it, it prohibits gameplay because they're too expensive and you don't get enough of them. Whew, that one, that one stuck with me, alright? That one lives rent-free in my head. Okay, what have we got here? 
low on fuel, but that's okay because we're already close to the core worlds. You know, something I forgot, there's something I could be doing that would probably help me in the long run, which is along the path anywhere I go, I should be stopping by any neutron stars or black holes and scanning them to up hyperspace topography, which I like the mechanic, but I don't think there's really much in the game that tells you about it. I, you're just supposed to, like, discover it, I guess. I mean... <sighs> Let's see... Recover an instrument package. Oh, right, this is why I have the neutrino detector. And I do have some volatiles that I found. That's just pointing to the planet, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'll follow this one. Which might also just be pointing towards a planet. So this should be five, yeah. Cheap and decent quality survey data. And one of them's just pointing towards the sun. Well, it was just close to the sun anyways. Oh, oops, I hit transverse jump instead of turning off the neutrino detector. That's fine, though. No big deal, just a little waste of supplies there. This is 5, class 2, so that sells for... How much does class 2 sell for? It's class 4, class 2, 3,000. So 500 credits of supplies for 3,000 credits of value. Cover that. Maybe I should have read that. My, nah, it's fine. We can head back over there. Is there anything else of interest in here? Not really. Survey that, survey that. That's a fairly big planet. I'll pass. Although, to be honest, I can afford to buy more supplies. Yeah, I'll, su I'll survey it so that I can just say that, that I've surveyed the whole system. You know, it's a nice little completionist feeling right there. And hey, it's even got decent resources. Although I don't typically colonize cryovolcanic. Six story points. Well, maybe I'll... Yeah, I think I'll go to Glacia. And then I'll head over to the world and system, expand my fleet a little bit and maybe use some S mods. And then I'll call it a day. And this is basically how I do the early game. Not the most profitable, but you do find, compared to say like, you know, trade routes, but I like it because you, f you get to see some action, which gets you some levels early on, especially if you punch above your weight class and get that bonus XP. And you also find a lot of brute, like blueprints and hull mods for free because of those research stations and mining stations and all that good stuff. Okay. Yep. Available jobs. Accept. Accept. And accept. The nice thing about most of these is that there's just no time limit on them. Although some of them he gives you money so that you can pay bribes which, you know, you just have to remember that you actually have to have money before you go do the mission. So I have had times where I've spent the money and then realized, oh, I don't have the money to do the mission. Well, that's not like it's a big deal. You can just get money somewhere else. Okay, dry fuel. I'll buy that. Let's see. I'll buy that too. Probably not going to be shield shunting much, but I'll buy it. All right, let's sell all this, let's sell all of that. I'm gonna hold on to all these weapons. Up at 500,000 credits, amazing. Although some of that is bribe money. But then again, once I do the missions, which are still in the core world, so the amount of fuel that I'm, and time that I'm spending is minimal, then I'll get more money than the bribe money, so. Yeah, very profitable, very nice. Let's see, do I have any decent, uh... Yeah, you can get this, but that does 
some people seem to like slap these on willy-nilly but you're paying extra maintenance costs which i guess are not the end of the world it's like one extra supply a month but one it's 50 percent maintenance for 30 percent increased capacity so if you think about the economics of it it makes more sense to just buy more drams instead oh hey i actually have the uh auto loader so i can rip perfectly replicate that build black market extreme yeah yeah whatever oh hey eradicator p is a pretty good early game f flagship although afflictors are pretty fun too that being said i would need some antimatter blasters to actually make that work oh hey that's pretty nifty pylums hmm. i'm not really keen to use harpoons on this thing without first getting like ECCM. Only one light auto cannon? That's it just feels unfair. Well I could steal them off of this thing because it doesn't really need them. Might as well link those. We don't need to max that out. Hmm. Let me get hull mods. And I do have hardened shields. What you really want is like a targeting unit for this thing. But this should be fine. You know, nice even split of caps and vents, hardened shields. Yeah, this should be fine for now. Well, that's why you have so much flux, right? You have Ordnance Expertise. <laughs> Energy Weapon Mastery. That is funny. It's got it. Well, I mean, I'm in the Hegemony territory, so it's not like I'm going to find the right ship for you. I'll probably... I'll just find that, like, later. Next time, in the next episode of spending way too much time talking and not enough time playing the game. With me, your host... That crew got changed a little bit. I think it's kind. It's okay now. Where before it was, I mean, it was 10 and 20 percent instead of 15 and 25, but it was a little cheaper. It's just that it was kind of useless. I think they they upped the power a bit so they could up the cost because they didn't want to make an S mod bonus for it. That seems like what happened. Now I think it's like uh, it kind of takes the edge off of replacement rate, so it's okay. How about auxiliary thrusters? Because you are sluggish. How about that? Yeah, I think I'll I think I'll go with that for now. All right, I can do this. Huzzah! Hmm. Hmm. I can actually drop these and get hard shields. So even though it's a low tech ship, you know, what do you do? What are you gonna do? 300 armor, get heavy armor, and 450? Wow, incredible. Amazing. It's still a frigate. You're still gonna wanna do shields. So look at that. 0.8 efficiency with 5,000. This could absorb a little over, you know, maybe 6,500 damage on its shields. And it's fast enough to actually, you know, get in, do some damage, and get out. Yeah, I think this is fine. This is a decent setup. Although I'll probably want to... Do I want to lean... Mm, for, what's exactly the break point for this? 2,000. So as long as it's got over... Yeah, so for destroyers, the break point is 8,000 flux. But before hardened shields becomes more worth it than capacitors. Well, I'm a little... I'm well over that already, so... Yeah, this is fine. 
Although, I'm tempted to lean more into there. Yeah, it's still over 8,000 even if I do that. So that'll do. I really don't have any of the hall mods that I want for it. Well, I could, I could S mod a distributor. Which I think I'm going to do eventually, so... Yeah, I'll probably keep this guy around. I'll S mod this. Get some sweet bonus XP. And the extra vision range of combat is actually pretty nice. I like it. It's a clever little buff. You're going to stay the way you are, because eventually you're getting replaced. Uh, you guys are probably going to get replaced. Let's face it. It's inevitable. I should do that. What else? I suppose I could just buy that Eradicator instead of faffing about. I could also reassign over to Gunnery Implants to make that make more sense. Yeah, I think I'll put you on the Apogee. I don't have ECCM, do I? No. So yeah, I'm not going to go with the Squall just yet. A Paladin? That's probably not the best idea. Well, you already have Helmsmanship, so I'll skip the Thrusters and just get more Flux. I don't know, that looks good to me. And then I will buy this thing. And I could spend a story point to get 1% ECM, or I could just not make it elite. I think I'll leave it uh, non-elite. Hmm. Heavy needlers. Hmm. Or I could do this one, because this is a pirate version, which means that I can just... The machine guns are actually a decent idea, because you can burn drive close enough to the enemy to actually use them. But the lack of helmsmanship is going to hurt. This, 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 this. Yeah, that looks good. Oh, and this while we're at it. I would like longer range weapons, but I guess this this is the pirate version, so... Going with needlers and a heavy mortar is not a bad idea. I want missiles, eh? Only one reaper. A little sad. I don't have missile racks, do I? Nah. Ooh. Hmm. Okay, what if I drop these? And say, okay. Go all in on annihilators. Get some more flux. Yeah, because this should be... Well, first I want to repair, actually. So if I'm fighting, say, an eagle... It'll look something like this. definitely feel the lack of uh, resistant flux conduits there. <laughs> I burn drive at the best time. Yeah, resistant flux conduits might be a little more necessary because 
I want to be able to close the distance and really get that DPS going. Could drop those to get better. Yeah, I think this is all right. Although the ones at the back. I want Vulcan Nats. No, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Okay, take two. I want to get more capacitors. So even on a low tech ship, it will still be useful. And I can't fire any of my missiles, which is annoying. This is this is why I really want. You know what? I'm gonna get a Reaper in there. <laughs> you can hear me overloading right at the end there. Ah, Reaper. You do want to get some of those in there. Use the spare points on capacity. Wish I had a few more. Ideally, what you want is two Annihilators in the front and three Reapers along here. So you can use the Annihilators just before you fire the Reapers, and they'll distract enemy point defense. And then the Annihilator, the uh, Reaper can then overload the enemy ship. Oh. Lovely. I'm starting to think that these machine guns are not going to work out. As much as I would like them to. Oh, I'm out of Vulcans, that's why it's... You know what? I have resistance flux conduits. I'm not going to worry about salamanders. Salamander? I've never even met him. Alright, let's see. This should work. Yeah? If this doesn't work... Well, I'll just I'll just cut the video. Oh hey, look at that. We actually shot down in the tropos. Amazing. And of course, the reaper is currently offline set those to auto-fire so that hopefully they do something at some point. Nice. Come on. Come on. We got this. Don't give up now. And the, the engine went out. Great timing. Hey, look at that. It did work. More or less. Yeah, this is not an ideal build. But it'll have to do for now. Actually, why am I why am I bothering with all this? I should just put on safety overrides. Except I don't actually like safety overrides that much. They're, they're just too linear in terms of design. You just pick the shortest range, highest DPS weapons and call it a day. And then you put safety rides on everything because short range ships block line of fire so you might as well go all in and then you just hit full assault and call it a day hmm. 
Hmm. Anything else I want from this market? No, I think that's it. Well, hopefully this demonstrates uh, the basic... I, well, actually, I can sell these guys. Hopefully this demonstrates that this game is not particularly difficult. And a lot of the fun is just kind of messing around. Yeah, so that's about it.